Hi everyone. So today in this video, we are going to start uh, the concept of calendar. So in this video, we will completely study the concept of calendar right from the beginning. So concept of clock has already been taught on the on the channel. Uh, PMC has already been taught. So these are the concepts which you may forget in the examination. And if you don't know the concept, if you haven't studied it, you will not be able to solve the problem in the examination. If I if I say what is the uh, what is the angle between minute and an hour and at 3:45. So if you haven't studied it, it will be tough for you. But if you have studied, that will be cake for you. Similarly, in the calendar as well, if you have studied the topic, it would be cake for for you. If you haven't studied, that will be difficult. So you you must cover the calendar topic within 90 minutes. I I think we will be able to cover it. Less than within less than nine, 90 minutes, we'll be able to cover it. Okay, so let's start with the simple concept that is what is a leap year or a non leap year, or we can call it ordinary year as well. So, non leap year versus leap year. So, what do you mean by ordinary year? In ordinary year, there are six 365 days, right? In 2023, in 2023, how many day, days were there? 365. Why it was non leap year? Why it was uh, which one will be leap year? That we will see, certainly, we will see. So 365 days are there. That means 365 by 7. What do you get? 365 by 7. 52 plus 1. That means 52 weeks and 1 day. 52 weeks plus 1 extra day. So there are 52 weeks and 1 day. What about leap year? Leap year means there will be 366 days. Just one more day. Basically there will be 52 weeks plus 2 days. 52 weeks plus 2 days. So, this is the difference between leap year and non-leap non leap year. Okay. Leap year and ordinary year. We will call it leap year and ordinary year. So, how do you determine whether a particular year is leap year or not? So, the year would be given to you. Okay. First thing you need to see whether it is a century year or not. What do you mean by century year? The year should be divided by 100. That's it. Century. Century means 100. So, 100 is a century year. 200 is a century year. Uh, 2000 is a century year, 5000 is a century year. Tell me 2010 is a century year. No, it is not a century year. It is not completed divisible by 100. Tell me 100 is a century year. Yeah, it is a century year. 40 is a century year. No, 40 is not a century year. It is not divisible by 100. So it has to be a century year. What will be the century year? 100, then plus 100, then plus 100, then plus 100, plus 100. So these are the century years, right? 2000. 2100, 2200. So these are the century years. So if that is a century year, if that is a century year and if it is divisible by 400, that is a century year and if it is divisible by 400, that means it is a leap year. Otherwise, it is a ordinary year. Ordinary year. Let's take some example. Let's take an example of 1600. First thing I will see, it is a century. Is it a century year? Yeah, it is a century year. If it is a century year, is it divided divisible by 400, not 4, 400? Yeah, it is divisible by 400. Completely divisible by 400, that means it is a leap year. So 1600 was a leap year. Let's take another example 1800, 1800. So is it divisible by 100? That means is it a century year? Yeah, it is a century year. Is it divisible by 400? No, it is not divisible by 400. Is it a century year? Yeah, it is a century year. But is it divisible by 400? No. So that means it is a ordinary year. Understood this concept? Let's talk about 100. Year 100. Year 100. Currently it is 2024. Then there must be 100 year as well. No? One year would be there. Two year, three year, four year, 10 year, 15 year, 50 year, 60 year, 70 year. 100 year would have been also there. So is it a century year? Yeah, it is a century year. Is it divisible by 400? No. So it is not a leap year. What about 200? It is also not divisible by 400. It is not a leap year. What about 400? Yeah, 400 is divisible by 400. So it is a leap year. So these are the examples. This is the way we can find. Now second thing, if your year is non-century year, non-century year means any number like that. Uh, 1764, 1851, 2023. So these are non-century year. In this, what you need to do? Last two digits you need to see. Last two digits you need to see whether last two digits are divisible by, divisible by 4 or not. So here, 1764, is it divisible by 4? Yeah, it is divisible by 4. 64, is it divisible by 4? Yeah, it is divisible by 4. So that means it is a leap year. 
If it is divisible by 4, that means it is a leap year. Otherwise, it is a non-leap year. So, I hope the concept is clear. First thing you will see, it is a century year or not. If it is a century year, you will check whether it is divisible by 400. If it is four, divisible by 400, then leap year. Then, if it is not a century year, you will check whether the last two digits are divisible by 4. If these are divisible by 4, that means it is a leap year, otherwise it is not. Well and good, very simple concept. Like, people teach this, like, some people get confused in this one. Like, uh, there are many rules, nothing like that. This is a simple slide you can see. With this slide, you will be able to tell every year whether that is uh, leap year or not. Let's see a lot of examples here. So, let's talk about 100. 100 is a leap year or not? 100 is a non-leap year. Why so? Because it is a century year. Yeah, it is a century year. Is it, a, is it divisible by 400? No. So, that means this is a non-leap year. Non-leap year. What about 200? 200 is a century year? Yes. Is it divisible by 400? No. Non-leap year. Non-leap year, I shouldn't say non-leap year. I should say ordinary year. I will write ordinary year. Non-leap year is equals to ordinary year. Ordinary year. Simple year. And leap year is different. 400. Is it divisible by 400? Yes, it is divisible by 400. What does that mean? That it is a leap year. 1764. Is it a century year? No, it is not a century year. So, is it divisible by 4? Last two digits divisible by 4? Yes, it is divisible by 4. That means it is a leap year. What about this one? Is it a century year? No. Last two digits is divisible by 4? 4 1 4, 4 3 12. Yeah, divisible by 4. That means leap year. Is it divisible by 4? Is it a century year? No. Is it divisible by 4? No. That means ordinary year. 23 is not divisible by 4. So, it is an ordinary year. What about this? Is it a century year? Yes. Is it divisible by 4? Sorry. Is it divisible by 400? No. It is not divisible by 400. That means it is an ordinary year. Is it a century year? No. It is not a century year. If it is a not, not a century year, is it divisible by 4? No. This is not divisible by 4. That means this is also an ordinary year. What about this one? Is it a century year? Yes. Is it divisible by 400? Yeah, it is divisible by 400. So, that means it is a leap year. What about this one? 2040. Is it a century year? No. There is zero in the end. Doesn't mean it, it is a century year. Century year means it has to be divisible by 100 as well. So, it is not divisible by 100. It is not a century year. But the last two digits are divisible by 4. If it is divisible by 4, that means it is a leap year. Is it a century year? No. Last two digits are divisible by 4? No. That means it is an ordinary year. Tell me about this. Is it a century year? No, it's not a century year. It's not a century year. So, last two digits are divisible by 4? No. That means it is an ordinary year. So, very simple concept. Very, very straightforward concept. You see a particular year, whether it's a century year or not. If it is a century year, divide that by 400. If it is divisible, that will be leap year. If it is not a century year, Divide the last two digits by 4. If it is divisible, that means that is a leap year. Otherwise, it is not. Well and good. Everything is crystal clear. Very straightforward concept. Right? So, if you know this much, that would be more than enough to solve the problems. Let's see some more important concepts. So, very simple concept we are seeing. How you can write 10 days? 10 days. 10 days, I can write 7 days plus 3 days. No doubt about, it. No doubt about that. What do you mean by 7 days? 1 week. So, can I call it like I have one week plus three odd days? This is the term we use, odd days. You have one week and three odd days. One week plus three odd days. What about 32 days? 32 days. Divide 32 by 7. Four weeks plus four odd days. Four weeks plus four odd days. 32 by 7. 7 4 are 28. Four remaining. So, seven, four weeks. Plus four odd days. Four weeks plus four odd days. What about 63? Divide 63 by 7. 63 by 7 would be what? 63 by 7. 9. So simply 9 weeks and 0 odd day. Plus 0 odd day. Odd is the just a, just a term odd days. It doesn't mean odd even, nothing like that. Odd days means different days. Odd means different different days. What about 72? 72 means 10 weeks plus 2 days. Because 72 by 7, 10 plus 2. So, 10 weeks plus 2 days. 10 weeks plus 2 days. Very simple, no doubt, no doubt about that. Plus 2 odd days. Very simple concept, even a school student can tell it. Right? Let's see a note. Look, the very first day, 
द वेरी फर्स्ट डे ऑफ कैलेंडर वॉज मंडे ओके फर्स्ट जैन फर्स्ट फर्स्ट द डेट इज फर्स्ट द मंथ इज ऑल्सो फर्स्ट द ईयर इज ऑल्सो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट जैन फर्स्ट डे वेरी फर्स्ट डे वॉज मंडे दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर द वेरी फर्स्ट डे इन द कैलेंडर वॉज मंडे द स्टार्ट ऑफ द सेंचुरी द स्टार्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेंचुरी इट वॉज मंडे टेल मी वॉट विल बी द डे ऑन थर्ड थर्ड जैन मंडे ऑन सेकेंड जैन इट विल बी ट्यूजडे ऑन थर्ड जैन इट विल बी वेनसडे राइट डब्ल्यू डी एन एस डी ए वाई वॉट विल बी डी ऑन डे ऑन वॉट विल बी द डे ऑन द सेवंथ जैन ऑन सेवंथ जैन वॉट विल बी द डे मंडे रुख फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ सिक्स सेवंथ मंडे ट्यूजडे वेनसडे थर्सडे फ्राइडे सैटरडे संडे संडे सेवंथ डे वुड हैव बीन संडे राइट वी स्टार्टेड विद मंडे सेवंथ डे वुड हैव बीन संडे ऑन एट्थ जैन वॉट वुड बी द डे ऑन एट्थ जैंथ एट्थ जैन सेवन डेज विल मेक वन वीक सेवन डेज इक्वल टू वन वीक टू वन वीक नाउ एट्थ जैन मीन्स वन वीक प्लस वन डे एट्थ जैन मीन्स वन वीक प्लस वन ओट डे वन वीक प्लस वन ओट डे यू स्टार्टेड विद मंडे मंडे ट्यूजडे वेनजडे थर्सडे फ्राइडे सैटरडे संडे फ्रॉम मंडे टू संडे देर आर सेवन डेज then eighth day will be again monday right it would again be monday that means in one week you cover from monday to sunday in one week you start from monday and you cover till sunday in one week monday to sunday well and good no doubt no doubt about that and if there is one more odd day that means there is if one more odd odd day is added that means that again that particular day will come day on 23rd jan day on 23rd jan what will be the day on 23rd jan what do you think what will be 23rd 3 weeks 3 weeks plus 2 odd day 3 weeks plus 2 odd days right 3 weeks you started with monday 3 weeks means you started with monday and you ended here with sunday one week means you started with monday and ended with sunday 3 weeks means again you started with monday and ended with the sunday then plus 2 monday tuesday so it will be tuesday right do you get this concept so if i let's just say if i ask you what will be the day on 27th jan 27th jan year 001 what you would do you will divide it by 4 what you will get 3 weeks plus 6 odd day if there was zero odd day If I had asked 21st Jan, what would be the day on 21st Jan? Tell me, what would be the day on 21st Jan? Sunday. What was the day on 7th Jan? Sunday. On 14th Jan, it will be Sunday. On 21st Jan, it will be Sunday. So if you are getting three weeks plus zero odd day, three weeks plus zero odd day, that means you are talking about Sunday. Are you getting this point or not? One week means you have started from Monday till Sunday. so if you are talking about zero odd day that means you are talking about sunday if you are talking about one odd day that means you are talking about monday and if you are talking about two odd days that means you are talking about tuesday three odd day means wednesday four odd day means thursday thurs is nothing thu and five odd day means friday and six odd day means saturday what do you mean by seven odd days seven odd days means again a week seven odd days means again a week that means seven odd days is equal to sunday only seven odd days is again a week that means sunday take your time you can understand this on your own as well right i have told you the concept one week means you started from monday and ended with sunday two weeks means again you started with monday and you ended with sunday two weeks two days two weeks two days so in two weeks you have got sunday so in the next two days when you will have one day other one will be tuesday so two odd day means tuesday this is what i have told here right so very easy concept very very straight forward now what do you mean by one leap year one leap year i told you one leap year was 366 days that means you can call it 52 weeks plus two odd day say yes or no 52 weeks plus two odd days What about one ordinary year? 
in one ordinary year there are 365 days what do you understand by that 52 weeks plus one odd day so in 365 days you get one odd day and in 366 days you get two odd days now let's see some questions in first 30 years how many odd days we will have in first 30 years this is a question in the first 30 years how many odd days you will have this question will not come in the examination because this odd days term is not that famous what will come in the examination that we will see later on but this is just to build the concept in first 30 years first target will be in first 30 years how many leap years are there how many non leap years are there this will be the target first 30 years tell me one thing how many leap years are there in first 30 years what will be the first year to have a leap year 4 then 12 sorry 4 then 8 right because this is not a century year it is divisible by 4 4 8 12 16 20 24 and 28 so how many leap years are there 3 3 6 7 7 leap years are there and what would be the other way divide 30 by 4 7 7 point something basically 7 years will be the leap year and other one will be the non leap year 30 by 4 4 7 ja 28 4 7 ja 28 4 8 ja 32 but 32 we will not go basically there will be 7 leap year and rest will be ordinary year there are 7 leap years plus 23 ordinary year ordinary year ordinary year in 7 leap years in each leap year we have two ordinary days in each leap year in each leap year we have two odd days in each leap year we have two odd days in each leap year we have two odd days and each ordinary year we have one odd day whatever the weeks are there we, we do not care about the number of weeks weeks will be 52 into 7 but we don't care about the weeks we only care about the odd days so in seven leap year how many odd days will be there seven into two odd days will be there right in seven leap years seven into two odd days will be there plus in 23 ordinary years how many odd day will be there in every ordinary year there is one odd day so there will be 23 odd days right so 14 plus 23 what you will get 37 days right 37 days is that your answer no because i told you seven days will make one week seven days will make one week so what about 37 37 by 7 five weeks plus two days five weeks plus two days so 37 days would be equal to five weeks plus two days so these are the number of odd days these are the number of odd days so number of odd day are two this is the number of odd days. Now, what did you understand by that? The number of odd days are two. What did you understand by that? If I ask you, what is the day on 20, 31st December year 30? What is the day on 31st December year 30? Where did you start from? Monday. In this much of week or whatever week was there, there were a lot of weeks. So, so in these weeks, the last day would have been Sunday. Here, the last day would have been Sunday. Like there are more weeks as well, like 52 into 7 plus 23 into 7. These many weeks are there plus these five weeks plus five weeks. So these many weeks are there, but these are the complete weeks. So after the completion of these weeks, what will be the day you will get? Sunday. And you are having two odd days. That means sun after Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. So on 31st December, 0 30, you are having Tuesday. You can check it on Google. This is the correct answer that on 31st December 0030 you would be having Tuesday but they will not ask these this kind of simple question what they will ask that we will check this was just to build your concept so that you understand what we are trying to do right so here we got Sunday plus other two days you are having so this was the target let's check out uh, uh, this question in first 40 years how many odd days we will have so in first 40 years In first 40 years, how many leap years are you having? 10, right? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 and 40. So 10 leap years you are having. None of them was a century year. So we did not 
so we don't need to care much and 30 ordinary year right tan leap year what do you understand by tan leap year in every leap year there are two odd days in every leap year there are two odd days that means 20 odd days are there plus in every ordinary year there is one odd day so 20 plus 30 50 odd days are there but is that the correct answer no 50 odd days means 7 week plus 1 odd day 7 week plus 1 odd day so this is the number of odd day so if i ask you one question that on 31st december 0040 what was the day what would be your answer monday because here the weeks were completed and you had only one odd day left so that would have been monday well and good very easy now this is the question think like think with full concentration okay don't mess it up do it on your own there is a high chance you can do the error okay do it on your own then check your answer there is very high chance that you can do the error here you have to find the number of odd days in first 100 years the concept is same where you will mess up in the first line you will mess up in the very first line you will mess up so what you will write first 100 years in first 100 years how many leap years are there this is my question how many leap years are there 100 by 4 25 leap years are there is it correct no it's wrong why is it wrong because till 96 how many leap years you are having 24 that is correct till 96 i am having 24 leap years 4 8 12 16 20 32 36 40 44 48 like that till 96 we are having 24 leap years then what will be the next leap year you would be thinking that 100 will be my leap year but is that a leap year no 100 is not a leap year 100 is not a leap year 100 is a ordinary year right so only 24 100 is a ordinary year you are having 24 leap year plus 76 ordinary year what is the most important point that 100 is a ordinary year ordinary year because 100 is a century year which is not divisible by 400 so it is a ordinary year 100 is a ordinary year so 24 leap year that means 24 leap year into 2 48 odd days plus 76 into 1 this much of odd days 48 plus 76 how much you will get 124 right 12 12 124 odd days is that the correct answer no 124 what does that show divide by 7 7 1 is 7 into 5 17 17 weeks plus 7 1 is 7 ok 5 5 5 days 5 days so these are the number of old days number of old days number of old days and now if i ask you the question that on 31st december year 100 what was the day what was the day sunday monday tuesday what was the day 5 that means it was thursday no sorry if you are having number of days as 5 so it was friday you can check on google that on 31st december 100 the day was friday why it was friday because number of days are 5 that means still here you are having sunday then monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so fifth day will be friday so the day would have been friday right so i am just building up your concept once uh, you see the you see the question that would be coming in your examination you will realize why i am taking these questions just uh, concept is building up find the number of odd days in first 200 years so first 200 years 200 years so in first 200 years there could be two methods to solve it first let's solve by the method that we already know what is that method so in first 200 years how many leap years will be there don't mess it up solve it on your own with your full concentration in first 200 years how many leap years would be there how many leap years would be there 48 right because in 0 to 100 there are 24 
100 is not a leap year. Similarly, 200 is also not a leap year. So, from 101 to 200, there will be 24 only. So, 48 leap years are there. 48 leap years plus 152 ordinary year, right? This is the method 1 we are proceeding with. Method 2 also we can see. So, 48 into 2, 96 days plus 152 into 2, 152 into 2, what that would be? 304, right? 152 into 2, 304. So, what that will be? 400. If you divide by 7, 7 just plus 1 day, 57 week plus 1 odd day. So, this is the odd day you are having 1 odd day. Or how you could have done 200 years, 200 years. What do you mean by 200 years? 100 years plus 100 years, 100 years plus 100 years. In 100 years, in 100 years, how many odd days you are having? 5 days. In 100 years, how many odd days you are having? 5. And in another 100 years, you will be having more 5 odd days. So, 5 days plus 5 days, 10 odd days. Wait a second, there is some error. Yeah, I am really sorry. Here only I messed it up that this would be 152. Because in 152 ordinary year, you will be having 150. 2 odd days only. So, 152 plus 96, what that would be? Actually, this is not a good method to calculate, but still we are calculating. 152 plus 96, 152 plus 96 would be 248, be 248. And I have to divide it by 7. So, 35 weeks plus 3 odd days, 3 odd days. So here I did a mistake. We should not have. A, we should not happen. That every leap year had, has two odd day and ordinary year has one odd day only. Or you can solve. Or you could have solved it in this manner that hundred year will have five odd days and another hundred years will have five odd days. So total ten odd days are there. If ten odd days are there, that means one week plus three odd days. One week plus three odd days. That's it. This is the answer. So, if I ask you, what was the day on 31st December 200? What was the day? The day was <coughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, because three odd days are there. That means it was Wednesday. Well and good. Let's solve the same for 300 years. You can solve by this method on your own, but uh, we will solve by Simple method that in 300 years, 100 year plus 100 year plus 100 year. 5 plus 5 odd day plus 5 odd day plus 5 odd day. That means total 15 days. 15 days can be written as 2 weeks plus 1 odd day. 2 weeks plus 1 odd day. 2 weeks plus 1 odd day. Well and good. Now, next question, you again need to solve it on your own, but take your time. Take your time. Don't mess it up. Solve it on your own. You can do the mistake. The mistake you will do, that will be in the first line. So, by two methods, we will solve. The first one is the 400 years. Tell me how many leap years are there in 400 years. In 1 to 100, how many leap years were there? 24. In 101 to 200, again 24. In 201 to 300, again 24. In 301 to 400, how many leap years are there? Here 300 was not, 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 not a low leap year, 200 was not a low leap year and 100 was not a leap year. But 400 is a leap year. So, this will be 25. Did you understand this point or not? Right? So, how many leap years are there? 97. 97 leap years. Plus... 303 ordinary years. 97 into 2, 194 odd days plus 303 odd days. 194 plus 303, that would be 497. 497 means 71 weeks 
प्लस जीरो ओडे जीरो जीरो ओडे जीरो ओडे बेसिकली यू आर हैविंग जीरो ओडेज सो इन फोर हंड्रेड इयर्स द कैलेंडर गेट्स रीसेट दैट अगेन ऑन फर्स्ट जैन फर्स्ट जैन फोर जीरो वन वट दैट वुड बी दैट वुड बी मंडे सेम एज वट फर्स्ट जैन डे वन सो इट वॉज ऑल्सो मंडे सो इन एवरी फोर हंड्रेड इयर्स द कैलेंडर गेट्स रीसेट Did you understand this point or not? Understood? Right? Now there could be another method as well. What could be the another method? You could have broken four hundred years into four into hundred years. Four into hundred years. Right? I will add one odd day as well. Why one odd day? I am adding. Because what I am going to do four four into hundred years, I am going to say four into hundred years, four into hundred years. What does that mean? That here you are having five into four twenty odd days. Four hundred year means twenty odd days because hundred years have five odd days. What I mean to say four into hundred. So four into hundred years. How many days? How many odd days? Hundred years are having five odd days. Every hundred year, you are having five odd days, right? Plus one more day, I will add because four thousand, four thousand itself is a leap year. Four thousand itself is a leap year. That means that will add up one more day, because in leap year you are having three sixty six days, and in ordinary year you are you are having three sixty five days. So four thousand is a leap year that will add up one more day. So plus one more day. So what you are getting? Twenty one days. If you are getting twenty one days, what does that represent? Three weeks plus zero a day. Look, you just you should not just keep on watching it. You should be doing some rough work as well. Zero a days, right? So in every four hundred years, you are having zero a day. So this you need to remember. This is the thing you need to remember, and this also you can remember. If you remember these two, that will be it. If you remember these two, everything will be clear. Why it will be clear? Because in hundred years. If I ask you, in hundred years there are five odd days. You remember that. So in three hundred years, how many odd days will be there? In three hundred years, five into three. That means fifteen. Fifteen means two weeks plus one odd day. So one odd day will be there. If I ask you about two hundred years, then what you will say? In first two hundred years, how many odd days will be there? So in hundred days, in hundred years, I know there are five odd days. Five into two, ten odd days will be there. Two ten odd days means one week plus three odd days. So answer would be three odd days will be there. That's it. So this is how you can. Remember, so only these two you have to remember. In hundred days, in hundred years there are five odd days, and in four hundred years there are zero odd days. Let's solve the problems now. So this kind of problem will come in your examination. That which day of the week was on twenty third, nineteen sixty three? So what will be my target? My target will be first. My target will be my task one would be. I am writing my task one. What would be my task one? That I need to find. Day on thirty first December, nineteen sixty two. This will be my target. Then I can go to twenty third third March very easily, right? So this is my target. What is my day on thirty first December, nineteen sixty two? So how you can write nineteen sixty two? Nineteen sixty two. I I know one thing that in every four hundred years the calendar get reset. In every four hundred years the calendar gets reset. So what if I do four hundred into four? That would be one thousand and six hundred plus three sixty two. So I can write three hundred years plus sixty two years, right? This is what I can do. In these years, in these years, how many odd days are there? Zero odd day. Zero odd day. Zero. Zero odd day. Right. What about these three hundred years? In three hundred years, how many odd days will be there collectively? Five into three, because in hundred we are having five. Five into three, fifteen. That means one odd day. One odd day. One odd day. And in sixty-two, how will you?
calculate 62? You will calculate in 62, how many leap years are there? In 62 years, in 62 years, how many leap years are there? 4, 8, like, like that. So, 62 by 4. 4, 1, 4. 4, 2, 4, 1, 15. 15, yeah. 15 leap years are there. 15 leap years plus 47. So, yeah, 47 ordinary year. That means this will give you 15 days. Sorry, this will give you 30 days because in one leap year you are having two odd days. And this will give you 47 days. Th that will be 77. 77 days. And 77 days directly means one week. Sorry, 11 weeks. 11 weeks plus zero odd day. Zero odd day. Basically, you are having zero odd day. So, in 62 years, you will have zero odd day. Zero odd day. So, collectively, you are having one odd day. You are having one odd day. So, on 31st December, on 31st December 1962, one odd day means it was Monday. Because zero odd day means it was Sunday that you have completed the week. One odd day means it was Monday. So, in 31st December 1962, it was Monday. Now, to get till 23rd March, what do I mean to say? From 31st December 1962, you need to go to 23rd March plus 23rd March 1963. How many days you will go through? 31st, th 31 day of January plus in 1963, is it a leap year? 1963, is it a leap year? No, it is a ordinary year. So, how many days Fab will have? So, this also I need to write here that uh, when we talked about leap year, so where I can write it? Here is small note I can write it. When we were talking about leap year, no? So, in leap year, leap year there are 360 days no right so in this one fab is of 29 days 29 days fab february of 29 days and in ordinary year february is of 28 days this is a very basic thing i hope all of you already know it this is 2024 so in 2024 february was of 29 days because 2024 is a leap year 2024 is a leap year, so February was of 29 days. But in ordinary year, the February will be of 28 days. So here, in 1963, February will be of 28 days only. So 31 plus 28 plus 23rd. Plus 23rd. Right? So, what in from 31, how many odd days I can get? 3. 3 odd days I will get, right? 3 odd days. From 27, I will get 0. And from 23, how many odd days I will get? 2. 0 odd day. 2 odd day I will get. This is your, here you are having 1 odd day. 1 odd day plus 3 plus 5. 6 odd days you get. Total odd day you got is 6 odd days. Did you understand this point or not? If I hadn't write this, if I did not write it, is there any issue if I don't write it? No, because till 1962, till this date, you have got one odd day. Till 31st December 1962, you have got one odd day. And after that, you got five more odd days. So, total six odd days are there. How many odd days you have got? Six odd days. So, total odd days. First, you got one odd day. Then you got from uh, March, you got 3, then 0, then 2. So, total 6 odd days you got. And 6 odd days, what does that show? 6 odd days means it was Saturday. So, yeah, this is the answer. Let's check our answer again. What did we do? We needed to tell what was the day on 23rd March 1963. We got to know it is an ordinary year. First, we calculated till 1962 how many odd days we were having. For 1962, I got to know that till 1600, 
there will be zero days because after every 400 years the calendar gets re reset so zero day then 300 plus 62 in 300 years i know there is one odd day and in 62 years how many odd days will be there i calculated that zero day will be there so till 31st december 1962 there is only one odd day there is only one odd day after that i need to check how many more odd days i am having so i go to know that it is an ordinary year so first i will go through jan so in jan there will be 20 31 day, 31 days 5 28 days and 23 days will be in march because i need to tell what will be the day on 23rd march on that particular day so 31 days that means 3 odd day plus 28 days 0 odd day plus 20, 23 days that means 2 odd days so 3 plus 2 5 odd days you are having here and one odd day you will get from there 5 plus 6, 6 odd days means it would be Saturday. Did you understand this point or not? Let's check it on Google as well. Like I have sold it, but for our shorty, let's check if our answer is 100% correct or not. 23rd March 1963 day. Saturday. Yeah. So you can think of any day and you can try solving your problems. But I have given questions here. Now the next question is day on 27th September 2001. Very easy question. 27th September 2001. So 2001 it is. What do you mean by 2000? How you can break it? 400 into 5. Say yes or no. 400 into 5. Plus 1. No. If you, you need to tell. 27th September 2001. So. You will calculate till 2000 only. You will calculate till 2000 only. You will go till 2000 only. Then you will see from the months. So till 2000. How you can break it? 400 into 5. So how many odd days it will have? Because till 2000 the calendar would have been reset. So what would be the time here? This would be 0 odd day. 0 odd day. Here you would have been having 0 odd day. Right, zero day. Now, 27th September 2001. 27th September 2001. So, zero day. What does that mean? That till 31st December 2000, you are having zero day, and you need to go till 27th September 2001. So, first you will go through March. Sorry, first you will go through January. 31 days. In 2001, how many days will be of February? 2001, is it a leap year? No, it is an ordinary year. That means it will be of 28 days. Then what will come? March 31. Then what will come? April 30. April, May 31. June 30. July 31. August 31. And September 27. So let's check. You will get 3 from here. 3 odd day from here. 0 from here, 3 from here, 2 from here, 3 from here, 2 from here, 3 from here, 3 from here, and how many from here? 27th. So, 21 days will make 1 week. So, 6. So, let's uh, add them up. 3, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I am a Hindi medium student, so I usually calculate in Hindi language only. Okay, I have to teach in English because there are a lot of... Uh, Students who don't understand Hindi. So, but yeah. Are kitna aya tha calculation ke baad? 25 days. So, you are having 25 days. And what does 25 days means? 3 weeks plus 4 odd day. So, eventually you are having 4 odd days. 4 odd days means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, 4 odd days means Thursday. So, you would be having Thursday. So this is your answer right here the answer was saturday now the answer would have been thursday let's check it on google yeah it was thursday only let's move on to this question which is a homework for you you can try it on your own 22nd december 1818 very easy question this is also an ordinary year this is also an ordinary year so you will go till till what point you will go if you had to solve this problem till what point you will go I would have gone till 31st December 1818. I would have gone till 31st December 1818. I would know the day on this one. Let's just say whatever the day we get. Then I can 
move backward right whatever the day you are having on 31st 1818 whatever the day you are having on 31st 1818 minus 7 that means 24 so on 24 december 1818 you would be having the same day minus 7 again what would be minus 7 that would be 17 so on that day as well you would be having the same and on 10th you would be having the same and on 3rd also you would be having the same so in 3rd december 1818 you would be having the same day which you got here and on the previous day you would be having one day lesser so my target would have been if this question came on in front of me in the examination i could i would have sold till 1818 only so on this day i would have got the day then i would have moved backward or what i can do till 1817 i can solve then i can move in the months how will i move in the months jan feb march april and i will see how many days are there how many odd days i get so this is the way or this is actually a good way that you move backward right so this is a homework problem i need you to comment down the answer in the comment section okay comment down the answer in the comment section day on 27th march 2000 27th march 2000 so till what point you will move 31st december first target is 31st december 1999 right so 1999 what you will write so 4 into 400 1600 okay plus 399 plus 399 so 399 i can write as double zero plus 99 so here you will have zero in three what you will have one right in 300 you will have one odd day in 100 days you have five in 300 you will have 300 three into five 15 one odd day in 99 years let's check that out in 99 years how many leap years you will have in 99 99 by 4 24 right yeah 24 so 24 leap year plus 75 75 ordinary year 24 leap year will give 48 odd days plus 75 48 plus 75 what that would be uh, 1 2 4 whatever that is why do we use why do we need to use the brain when we have the calculator 1 2 3 look i don't do the calculation in the air because i am teaching if i do a min minute mistake that will be that will be very uh, very difficult for the student to understand even in the examination i prefer doing easiest calculation with the calculator because we are having the calculator why why should we take any risk okay and the time will never run out in your gate examination the time is never going to run out okay you will have enough time so these kind of calculation you should do with the calculator only so that no errors comes and if you want to do it in the air you can do it in the air as well so 123 odd days 123 odd days so divide by 7 7 one is 7 just 17 weeks plus 4 days right so basically i can recheck as well 17 into 7 plus 4 yeah so from here you are getting 4 old days from here you are getting 4 old days so total how many days you are having 5 old days you are having here 5 old days from this you have got 5 old days right now you will move from 31st December to from 31st December 2002 27th March 31st December 1999 to 31st December 1999 to 27th March 2000 right so first you will encounter January that is the 31 days then you will encounter February in 2000 what is that this is a leap year 2000 is a leap year because it, it is a century year and it is divisible by 400 as well so it is a leap year so february will be of 29 days and then 27 days of march so how many you you will get here three how many you will get here one right one odd day you will get seven four are 28 one odd days and here you will get six so, seven three are 21 six so six plus seven so ten odd day 10 
10 days and 10 days will be equivalent to 1 week plus 3 odd day. 3 odd day. Right? So, what are the total odd days you are having? 5 plus 3. So, total odd days. Total odd days. 5 plus 3. I shouldn't make this. The total odd day will be 5 plus 3 odd day. 5 plus 3 odd day means 8 odd days. And what does 8 odd day show? 1 odd day. And what do you mean by 1 odd day? 1 odd day means it would be Monday. Your answer is Monday. Till now, you must be comfortable with all these kind of problems that on this particular day, it would have been Monday. So, let's check the tip as well. Let's be sure with our answer. 27th March 2000 D. Monday. So, answer is Monday. Well and good. This is a homework problem for you. On 20, on on 2nd December 1960, what will be the day? You need to write down in the comment section. If you have understood the lecture, you need to write down in the comment section. So, that is it. This is the complete concept of calendar. In 50 minutes, you have understood every single thing. I have given two questions. What will be the day on 22nd December 1960? And this question, what will be the day on 22nd December 1880? 1960 is a leap year or ordinary year? It is a leap year. Why it is a leap year? Because it is not a century year and it is divisible by 4. Last two digits are divisible by 4. So, it is a leap year. So, you have to solve this by this method and you need to comment down in the answer. So, in just 50 minutes, you have understood every single thing about the calendar and that is it. These kind of questions only will be asked in your examination if the question is coming from calendar. Yeah, that's it. So, if you found the video helpful, please do share it with your friends. So, in this channel, we are going to cover every single thing that is required for the aptitude because we are not wasting our time where what you already know. There are a lot of things in aptitude that you already know. And I also know as a teacher, I also know that you already know these things. So, why should I waste my time? What you don't know, PNC you don't know, probability you don't know, concept of clock you don't know, calendar concept you don't know, time work, how to solve those problems that you don't know, pipes entrance problem you don't know how to solve those. Mm. There might be some guys who don't even know how to solve the simple interest compound interest problem. So, these kind of concepts we will cover up. It's not that we'll be spending time of, on HCF or LCM. Certainly, I will cover HCF and LCM as well, but we will not be spending much time because those who don't know those concepts, they can spend time here. But these are the concepts which usually everyone forget. If I had been the student, I have to also revise these kind of concepts. So, that we are covering in the beginning. Right? Okay, then uh, please do share it with all the branch students so that we get a maximum reach. Okay, then thank you.